Hey guys, my name is Jeff, and this is the long-awaited six-speed manual 2023 Toyota GR Supra. And the manual transmission that's in this car actually has quite the interesting story. It's important to note that the six-speed manual is exclusive to the inline six option, but let's talk about where that transmission came from. So for this transmission, the Z4, which the Supra is of course based off, there's no secret about that, but that Z4 is actually not offered with a manual transmission here in the United States. So Toyota opted to look for a transmission they could use, and they did end up using a BMW unit. They worked with BMW and the supplier ZF to go ahead and find a transmission that would work. So it turns out there is a European version of the BMW Z4, which has a four cylinder and a manual transmission. So they took that manual transmission, made a bunch of different changes. Things like gear ratios were adjusted, even some of the slight different components and things like that to make a transmission that would be exclusive to the GR Supra. So that's what we have here. That's what's been altered. And that's what you'll find in the so with that, let's go ahead and get into it. We'll look at the exterior, the interior, the powertrain, and of course, we'll take it for a drive. So moving right into the exterior of the car, this beautiful blue that you see here is called Stratosphere Blue. And while it is one of the newer colors available, it wasn't available at looks absolutely gorgeous, especially with these graphite 19 inch wheels that are probably my favorite factory wheels that you can find on the Supra. I think absolutely incredible. I can't see any reason that you would want to change those out. And those are wrapped in some nice sticky Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. So that's always a good thing the driving experience goes. Now, on top of that, the Supra is relatively the same. There are no new crazy cosmetics or anything for 2023. As you can see here, they have made some slight updates, things like some of the taillights and headlights may have been adjusted slightly throughout the production run with some other changes and things like that. But fairly standard. It is interesting looking at the history of the FT1 concept car that was unveiled for the 2023 Toyota Supra and how they had to adjust the hard points for the car. So the body's a little bit different, not quite as flat and low schemed as the original FT1 concept was, but I think it's a fantastic looking car and I would take this over a BMW Z4 all day. Now, talking price-wise, these are on the more expensive side, coming in around $57,000. This particular car comes out to about $59,000 with some of the other options it's equipped with, like the driver assistant package and the fact that this Stratosphere Blue is a bit of a premium color option. Now, just to run through the exterior bits, nonetheless, we do have our front here with our awesome uh, LED headlights. We have our Toyota badges, nothing too crazy or out of the ordinary. We do have some non-functional vents, both this one in the front, but the little... Uh, arrow bits on the side are always cool. We do have our red super calipers, which have the excellent font that I really appreciate. It's a nice attention to detail with our 19 uh, inch wheels I mentioned earlier. Massive disc brakes, of course. We have some more vents that aren't necessarily functional. The hood looks like it could be a clamshell, but it, it's not, it opens the other way. We do have a double bubble hood. And then we do have some more aero side skirts along the bottom there. More functional vents. Our gas cap, which is actually just a push. Easy access there. Then as we come around the rear, we have some very good looking components. We do have this sort of duckbill spoiler that is molded into the body. These gorgeous head exhaust down low and even a little bit of an F1 brake light. So kind of a cool touch there. That's a quick look at the exterior of our 2023 Supra. So moving interior of the 2023 Toyota Supra. Sorry, I have the AC on. It's quite warm in here today. We are in Phoenix, Arizona, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features in here. Now, clearly this is the BMW Z4 interior. These buttons, there's lots of things that give it away. Our 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen, but we also have some physical buttons and controls over here. Very, very nice. Let's look at the cool first cool thing, which of course is the manual transmission. So the interesting thing about this is it's fairly notchy in a sense. You can kind of hear some of the clicking and stuff as it moves around. Um, um, but I'll get more into that in the driving experience. But you can see it is specific. There are some Alcantara versions of this car as you go higher up, but we don't have that in this car. I believe that's available for the A91 exclusively, but this car premium doesn't get it, but we have the manual transmission nonetheless, which has beautiful carbon fiber, which is a very cool thing. Next to that, we do have our sport buttons, some of our traction control buttons, all good stuff, especially the sport buttons gonna open up those exhaust valves a little bit more, make the car respond a little bit better, and just all those types of things. So fantastic stuff to see there. This is, of course, like I mentioned, some of the physical buttons for the controls. This moves around. You can also spin it and scroll it, and I'll manage everything here. But of course, this is all based on touchscreen as well. So you can manage want to. So you get a bit of both depending on what you want to do. Now, one of the interesting things is that this actually does is capable with uh, wireless CarPlay F Android Auto. So if you're an Android user, sorry, you'll have to download the 
View app, you won't be able to use it through this, which is kind of interesting that they have that Toyota Supra app that you have to use instead of any other sort of normal interface for it, but it's available for the car nonetheless. And we have some of our other physical options, uh, buttons that are available down here our climate control buttons as well. So you do have dual zone climate control. You get seat heaters as well, which is great for our sports seats, which do happen to have a fair bit of bolstering. As you take a look here, they're fairly tight. So you're definitely going to want to sit in this car and test it out for yourself. Make sure that you fit fairly comfortably. Now inside here, it is a very snug cabin. It almost feels like a tank with a very narrow, you can see my hand for scale here, almost takes up this entire sort of viewing port just above the steering wheel. Compact space, certainly not friendly to people that are super tall. I had a friend that was 6'4", who had some issues fitting in it. The seats don't go that far back. I have no problem fitting in it. We have some of our light switches, the adjustments for moving some of the power mirrors around or windows, etc. And then we have speaker premium audio system, which is actually from JBL, but very cool that that's in the car nonetheless. Now, one of the biggest things that this car gets praised for is actually its gauge setup here. So it's not anything crazy. It's not overly customizable by any means, but it is good. The fact that you get your tack right in front of you is a huge and then you have your gas gauges on either side, some of your temperature gauges, and it even shows you what gear you're in. As you can see, as I shift through there, you can see it kind of change up. So very cool nonetheless. I also like that you can actually rev this car. Some cars, with uh, even with manual transmissions, don't actually let you rev up very far. Some will limit it at 3,000 RPM, but that's not the case here. So that's pretty cool. It's fairly easy to see out of even the hatch visibility. Really isn't that bad. All in all, pretty cool car. More of our sound system in the back there with a cover so you can actually store stuff in the back without having to worry about people trying to get in break in there it's an actual older usb style in there one of the important things to point out is that this sort of setup for bmw is actually now kind of out of date bmw has moved on to a new interior style but the supra which has been in production since 2020 does have some of the older style buttons but honestly it's no problem more integrated features in this display. It is a little awkward with how narrow it is, but everything has been functional and fine. I haven't had any problems with that. This complaint would have to be this back here. So having the cup holders back here is one thing, but the fact that you don't get, uh, it gets in the way of my shifting personally. You can see how when I put my arm here, it kind of blocks some of the cup holders. That is one of my biggest complaints as a manual driver. I always like cars that have solutions or better cup holder options for manual transmission so I can have my drink without worrying about it getting in the way of my shifting. But that just might be my personal complaint and your experience might vary with the car. And then we do have some extra storage and things like that. So not too shabby overall. I do like the steering wheel. It's fairly comfortable. The different contrast stitching in there is quite nice. And some of our various other options for cruise control, managing some of the voice modes, which I found to be Eh, but whatever, nonetheless, it's all there. Overview of the interior here in our Supra. So under the hood of our 2023 Toyota Supra is a turbocharged three liter inline six under all this engine cover here, which actually doesn't look that bad as far as engine covers go. Still looks fairly racy for this sports car, but that engine is producing 382 horsepower and 368 pound feet of torque, which is a lot, first of all, and definitely not bad when you consider that this car weighs just 3,400 pounds. What that means is this car, which is rear wheel drive, can do zero to 16 around 3.9 seconds with the manual transmission, a quarter mile and around 12.4 seconds and it has an electronically limited top speed of 155 miles per hour so not too shabby definitely more than fast enough for the street should be plenty for any track days that you plan on doing as well but it's quite the performer as well now it does include some additional goodies it actually does have a sport rear differential which should be a limited slip and then the engine even comes with an active sport exhaust listen to this So there are some important things to note. The fact that this is the inline six, the inline six is the only option. If you want to get the manual transmission, there is a lesser inline four option, which is turbocharged, but you can't get the manual transmission with that. So you have to keep that in mind, depending on what your pricing options are. Now, one of the important things that we should talk about is fuel economy. While that's not the most important thing when it comes to sports cars, I figure it's worth noting nonetheless. So this car is rated by the EPA actually worse than the automatic version. The manual is rated at 19 city and 27 highway with 21 combined so with that 13.7 gallon fuel tank your estimated range should be about 300 miles per gallon i can say that on my first tank with this car i burned through it pretty quick and didn't make it to 300 miles so your experience may vary depending on how you drive but just so you know you'll have to vary obviously you'll get better gas mileage on the freeway just 
important things to keep in mind. But what a powerhouse, what a cool engine, and it sounds absolutely fantastic, but of course, it is still a BMW-derived engine. We have our Toyota badges, but it doesn't take you very far to find your first BMW badge in the powertrain. But that's a quick look at it, and there you go. Okay, so what's it like to drive the brand new Toyota Supra, specifically with the six-speed manual transmission? Sorry for the camera angle there, it was a little uh, not ideal as far as the equipment for today, but let's talk about what it's like to drive. So first and foremost, I'm gonna talk about the manual transmission. That's the new part for 2023, and I figure it's important to talk about, of course. Now this car does have rev matching, which is okay as far as rev matching goes. It can be turned off if it's not to your liking, so no worries there, but it's available. If you like that, great. If not, turn it off. So just getting into the feel of the transmission, there's something that's not quite right to me, and it could just because maybe I'm not a huge fan of BMW manual transmissions, but the clutch has this sort of dull, springy, bouncy feel to it that I don't like, and it can sometimes feel kind of hard to shift smoothly, if that makes sense. So. That's a personal preference of mine. Sometimes it can feel a little bouncy and kind of hard to gauge where the actual release point is for the car. I've still been able to drive the car, no problem. And it's a little bit easier if you're driving aggressively, let's say, or uh, enthusiastically, it can be easier, but you don't want to do that all the time. You'll get terrible gas mileage. And plus there's certain instances like a school zone where maybe you don't want to do that per se. Moving on to the shifter feel, the shifter feel is, is fine. It's kind of notchy, but it sometimes it feels really vague. Um, so it can be kind of hard to tell exactly which gear you're in or where the next gear is. It doesn't always necessarily lead itself in there. So while it does add the manual transmission as a whole, does add to a more engaging experience for the new Supra. And I'm so glad it's here I, from what I understand. The actual orders are flying in. I believe it's just under 50% of a lot of the 2023 models so far sold are actually manual transmission. So if you're voting with your money, good for you. That is how we keep more of these enthusiast cars on the road. So that is a fantastic thing to see. Now moving on to the other driving portions. This car, it handles fantastically. As I mentioned earlier, the fact that this car is so light, of course you get quick acceleration. The car accelerates very hard. It's a ton of fun getting on the freeway on ramps. You just have a good time with it. In addition to that, the car handles extremely well. You'll find no problem putting this car into all sorts of bends and turns. If you want to take it through canyon roads, fun curvy roads, this car can handle all of that. As for the fuel economy, I can very much say I've been around the, a little less than 300 miles of range, which obviously you're going to drive it like a sports car, so expect your gas mileage to be a little bit towards that lower number and closer to that 21 average, as I mentioned earlier. So unfortunate, but you can definitely eke out more gas mileage if you're just cruising in sixth on the freeway no problems there whatsoever. As for the visibility, as I mentioned, it, it's it's a very small car, but I have no problems with visibility. I can see out of everything. Um, it's easy to tell where the nose is of the car because of the big haunchy kind of fenders. You get a better idea of the general shape of the car and just where everything appears. I have no problem seeing out the back hatch either. You also get your windows. Sometimes getting into reverse can be a little bit weird, but you have a backup camera that has the directive uh, guidance as well, which is pretty helpful. And it's just a general ple pro uh, pleasurable, usable experience as well when it comes to using the car and the back has been plenty for getting groceries so no problem with that at all it's a fantastic daily of a car it's just a great all-around car and assuming the manual transmission isn't for you they do make it with an automatic which is blisteringly fast and gets the added benefit of even giving you better fuel economy so with that that's going to be the end of the video if you enjoyed it could hit that like button for me i'd really appreciate it and consider getting subscribed for more videos like this in the future feel free to comment down below if you're considering buying a supra or if you You've already bought one. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are specifically in regards to the manual transmission. But of course, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys 